everyone, DJ here. I have noticed that the audio quality with this video camera is not the greatest. I ask that you please uh, tolerate it for a little while. I'm going to keep using it until I can get a better camera with uh, better audio characteristics. I don't know how long that will be, so please bear with me. Thank you very much. This is DJ again, and this week I'm going to cover the bare bones basics of how reserve retirement works. This is not an in depth review, this is just some of the essential bits of information. And I'm going to go more in depth in later episodes. So, as I promised in my reboot announcement, I'm going to do some visual uh, aids for this particular uh, presentation. So there'll be a couple of slides. If you don't like slides, then just listen to the audio. I'm pretty sure I can make this understandable even if you don't look at the slides, but the slides will help a little bit. So let's jump right in and see what we can learn today. Again, for those of you who are a bit afraid of slides, don't be too concerned. This is going to go very quickly and it's quite simple. So for those who were not already aware, uh, believe it or not, you can retire from a, a reserve component. I have actually met people who thought this was not possible, who thought that you could only retire from the active component and were quite surprised to find out otherwise. The big thing I have noticed during my time in this field is knowledge is definitely lacking out there for the common service member and we need to fill that gap. So knowledge is key and the more the service member knows the more he can benefit from it. Another thing to keep in mind, contrary to popular belief, things are not automatic. I mean, remember the old adage about death and taxes. Those are the only things that are automatic. In this game, you've got to have knowledge, and you've got to be able to be proactive when the time comes. And as I say here at the bottom, in the end, it's all about money. So the more you know, the better. All right, these are the components from which you can earn a military retirement. And these are not typos. Yes, those agencies... Uh, at least the commissioned core of them receive a retirement uh, just like military officers do. But we're going to focus on this part because that's why we're here. Believe it or not, military retirement is not that complicated, as I'm going to point out. It's pretty simple once you break it down into plain English. All right. Bottom line up front, military retirement on the reserve side is based on three things. It's based on your rank, your time in service, and the number of retirement points that you have. Every time you perform military duty in a paid or sometimes even unpaid status, you earn retirement points. The more of these you have, the higher your military pension will be. And there, just as a side note, there are some that argue that I shouldn't say the word pension, that it should be called retired pay. Um, I use them interchangeably, so just be aware of that. There are two main types of retirement points. They are active duty for training and inactive duty for training. That's what the ADT and IDT versions are. So active duty points is pretty simple. If you are in an active status like your regular army, regular air force, or you are in an annual training status uh, in the reserve component, that's all active duty. Inactive duty would be your monthly drills. And there are different rules for the different types of points. We'll go into that. But before I do, 
I need to establish one thing up front. There is an accounting period called a retirement year, or in the National Guard it's called an anniversary year. This is the date that the accounting period for you ends. This is important because a retirement year is not a calendar year or a fiscal year like a lot of people seem to think. It's different for every service member. If you do not have a break in service, then it's typically the day before the date you first join the military. If you had a break in service or other strange little things happen in your career, then your retirement year ending date could be reset, but it's pretty easy to figure out. If you have ever seen a retirement point statement on you, then somewhere on that statement should be the day your particular accounting period ends. Now, why would I harp so much on why an, we have an end date? Well, that's because you have, from the start of that accounting period until the end of it, in other words, one year, to earn at least 50 retirement points. If you get at least this many points, then it is considered a satisfactory year for retirement, or sometimes we just call it a good year. If you do not, then that year does not count for retirement purposes, and you have to start over again the next year. Now, everyone knows about the 20-year uh, qualifying uh, service for retirement on the active duty side. That makes active duty very simple. National Guard, Army Reserve, and all the other reserve components are a little different. You have to get 20 qualifying years in order to uh, be considered retirement eligible. So your leave and earning statement, your pay statement, or LAS, can say that you have 26 years for pay. But if you only have 18 good years for retirement, then you are not retirement eligible no matter what that leave and earning statement might say. I've run into far too many service members who looked at their pay statement, saw 20 or more years, and thought, oh, I'm good, and then got out. And then later on found out, oh no, you were not good after all. So anyway... We want 20 qualifying years. I know I say here, except for medical reasons, I'm not going to cover that right now. I'll cover that in a later episode. Um, that gets into a very deep rabbit hole, and it's best to attack that, sub that subject by itself. I said earlier, military retirement is not hard to understand. It seems like it's hard to understand, if you take all of it at once, but we're doing uh, the old riddle of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So if that's what we're going to do here. I'll skip medical retirement for now. So how do you earn retirement points? You perform military duty. That's how. And there are various t ways to do that. If you go to annual training, then you are earning one point per day. If you do any type of active duty, you're earning one point per day. That adds up pretty quickly. If you go to monthly drills, then you're earning up to two points per day. Inactive duty training points are the only type that you can earn correction. They're one of two types of points that you can earn more than one per day. That other one being distance learning or correspondence courses. I'm not going to get into that one either right now. We'll cover that one later. All right, so you have drill points. You have annual training points. You also have this little thing here, membership points. I sometimes get bad looks from my superiors when I refer to membership points as maintaining a pulse points. But that's essentially all it takes. If you are in the reserve component for a year, you get 15 
retire correction 15 membership points and that counts towards your minimum of 50 so that means you really only have 35 points that you need to earn every year keep in mind this little dude however there are limits to the number of inactive duty training points you can get that number has slowly gone up over the years it's now 130 uh, in fact back in the dark ages when I first joined uh, the limit was 60 and that bit everybody in the military or everyone in the reserve components a, a bit of a blow to mix metaphors uh, let me give you an example okay so let's do a little math don't worry I'll make it easy so back when I enlisted the limit was 60 points per year for inactive duty training points if you do four drill points or earn four drill points per month and if you didn't know already the MUTA or MUTA stands for multiple unit training assembly so if you hear MUTA 4 that's four multiple unit training assemblies kind of redundant but four points that you can earn for that weekend so if you do four MUTAs times 12 that's 48 add the 15 membership points and if you're National Guard add nope nope just skip that so add yeah 48 plus 15 48 UTAs and 15 membership points that equals 63 well that's higher than 60 so that means if you did everything you were supposed to do you lost three points per year and if you did other things that were considered inactive duty points you lost all of those as well. You still got paid, but you didn't earn any additional points toward retirement. So over the year, the laws have changed and made that a little better for us. Something else I won't cover right now, but definitely in later episodes, is every reserve component service member should learn how to read and understand his retirement points capture sheet they have different names across the different services so I'll just call it this for now or point statement that's another term that I'll use a lot no one's responsible for your career except you so it's best to know what you're doing and know how to make use of the information and your service so it pays you off even more in the future the big thing about the point sheet is no one knows whether it's correct or not except you because no one else knows your career you know, I've been a uh, retirement points accounting manager in the National Guard since 2010 and I get it on a regular basis you know a, a guy will ask me is this correct and I have to just shrug every time because I don't know his career only he does now at least for the software that's used for points management in the National Guard uh, there are various reports that can be generated that make it easier for the service member to figure out if it's correct or not so you know, that's something else that I will cover in later episodes the reason I harp on learning to read this sheet so much is it's a lot easier to fix things now while you still know about it and while resources are available than it is to wait 20 years after you separate and then try to fix it confused yet hopefully not hopefully I made this quite simple now here's something to keep in mind make it a little goal for yourself maybe if you have at least 1920 retirement points by the time you decide to leave service with 20 qualifying years of course then your retired pay will be equal to your drill pay every month now that's actually a pretty sweet deal right there 
if you can stay home and still get drill pay every month. This number works regardless of rank or time in service. So the first goal anyone should have is try to get 1920 points. Now let's do a little more math. 48 drill points plus 15 membership points plus if you're National Guard 15 annual training points equals 78 points per year. So if you do everything that's already laid out for you that's 78 points. Notice that is less than the 96 I have over here. This is your first goal. Try to go a little above and beyond and it's drill pay for the rest of your life. Now in these days of multiple deployments you know, and all sorts of other things causing service members to have extended periods of active duty, getting an average of 96 points per year is pretty simple. Now that probably is not going to continue for most of us so it's good to know other avenues to earn points try to get to that first goal at least and have drill pay for the rest of your life. Now if you're an overachiever and want to do more as so many do then you can pursue these other two goals and have the equivalent of drill pay and annual training for the rest of your life. That's annual training pay divided by 12. So, so if you get either of these be whether you're guard or reserve. If you get either of these totals then the amount of pay you're getting at the end of the year is equivalent to all 12 months of drill plus your 14 or 15 days of annual training. Pretty nice. In my full presentation when I'm teaching classes I have many other breakdowns of this particular chart but for today's purposes like I've said before we're going to keep it simple. Real quick, I know this is a lot of numbers. I'm a number junkie, as you can probably tell already, but I'll just hit the highlights here. If you are an E4, you know, going to drill, your pay is, at least in uh, 2016 dollars, was $323 per month. What you didn't know is 75% of that pay an additional amount was put into what's called the military retirement fund. By the end of 20 years, assuming you never got promoted, by the end of 20 years there's almost $175,000 sitting there waiting for you to claim it in retirement. That works out to about $333 per month. And all you gave was your time. So again, pretty sweet deal. You didn't have to invest any of your own money, just your time. Here's how much that uh, is uh, in terms of trying to recreate it yourself. So getting about the same amount of money, 350 if you were going to try to establish a, a retirement of your own, roughly equivalent to an E4, and for those spouses or civilians watching, E4 is a pay grade. There are different pay grades in the military, something else I'll cover later. But anyway, if you're going to recreate a retirement of your own, you would need at least $250,000 put into a savings account with 1.68% interest paid. And you're not going to find that right now anyway. Never touch that 250000 and the interest from it will be 350 a month. Again, confused yet? Now, here's something that all of you will love. The real quick back of the napkin method to compute your retired pay. Take the total number of retirement points off that point statement that you hopefully have. Divide that by 14,400 find your pay rate on the military pay chart which you can get at dfas.mil if you didn't already know multiply that number that you got earlier by your monthly pay grade and that's your monthly retired pay pretty nice and for those who like algebraic equations 
there it is very simple all right admit it someone's mind is blown was it yours all right last topic for today there's a little more than just some money in the future if you make it to 20 qualifying years there's also some health insurance or maybe maybe insurance is not a good word but that's what we're going to use some health insurance down the road for you as well this is sometimes worth more than the actual pension would be believe it or not in fact one time I was talking with a financial counselor we were teaching a class on retirement planning and he had mentioned that for most people you need at least two million dollars over the course of a retirement in order to live relatively independently and for the life of him he could only come up with a million for most people and then we threw in TRICARE and that easily you know made up for a good deal of the difference so keep this in mind whenever you do qualify for reserve retirement you've got TRICARE not just for yourself but for your family when your full retirement eligibility rolls around and again this is often worth more than the retired pay is especially for the typical reservist this is yet another thing where I'm gonna you know, save the specifics for a later episode because there are several different versions of TRICARE and I don't want to get bogged down in today's episode with describing all of them just keep that in mind as a benefit that you have earned for the future and that is it back to me all right guys that's it hopefully that was understandable for you and if not please leave some questions down in the comments so I can try to clarify it for you in there if I think I haven't done a good enough job in this video I'll do another one so we can get everyone on the same page. I uh, thank you for coming back to watch this episode. There will be more. And hopefully not as long as this one was. This was a lot longer than I expected. But it was good information. And we've got to lay a foundation somewhere. So, until the next time, thank you very much. Have a great day. If you liked what you heard on today's video, then please go below and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, please let other people know about this channel and the information it can provide for them. If you have questions or comments, then please have no qualms about posting them in the comments section below. Please remember the RC Retirement YouTube channel and the RCRetirement.com website are not recognized or endorsed by the Department of Defense the Department of Veterans Affairs, or any other government agency. The information presented in these resources are for informational and entertainment purposes only. Also, the content of either of these resources should not be considered financial or legal advice. Please consult with your own legal counsel or financial planner before making any decisions based on what you have learned here. As always, thank you for watching the RC Retirement YouTube channel.